tonight's lecture by Dr. Guy McPherson. Um, I'm Andy Weibel. I uh, run the lecture series here at the college. Um, finally, about our speaker, Dr. Guy McPherson. Um, I've got his book here called Walking Away from Empire, and it's his most recent book. He has about 10 other books that he has published. Uh, he was an academic, and that, I guess he still is, as we'll see from his presentation, but he used to work at the University of Arizona and teach. He taught there, had tenure, everything was going splendidly, I suppose, and then he decided to hit the road and uh, to raise, uh, to live on a farm and change his life. And uh, we'll hear a little bit about that tonight. He. Uh, Let's see, what else? He got his uh, undergraduate from University of Idaho, his master's degree and PhD from Texas Tech, and uh, he, his area of uh, teaching when he was at the University of Arizona was uh, natural resources and the environment. He would talk in that department. Uh, tonight's talk is called The Myth of Sustainability, The Importance of Durability, and a method for saving the planet. So please help me in wel welcoming Dr. Guy McPherson. Thank you. His book is going to be for sale at the end, too. His book will be for sale at the end, too, for 20 bucks. What a deal. <laughs> Not available in any store or limited time offer. You've seen this on television. <coughs> That's right, the book is available. If anybody wants to come up and get one after the to talk, feel free, 20 bucks, which is what it cost me, it's 30 if you get it from the publisher. Every year of my life, that's almost 52 years so far, the world has become a worse and worse place. Every year we have polluted more water than the year before. Every year there's been less clean air than there was the year before that. Every year there are fewer, fewer species on the planet than the year before that. We're driving 200 species a day to extinction. Every year there's fewer salmon, every year there's fewer carnivores. We're about to see that turn around. The living planet is about to make a comeback. And that's really, really good news. And I want to talk about that today within the context of discussing these other matters. So I'm going to, this is the outline for my talk, I'm going to talk about the myth of sustainability, sustainability is a myth. So in that light, I'm going to talk about the importance of durability, and then talk about the twin sides of the fossil fuel coin, which is mostly what I speak and write about, global climate change and energy decline, or peak oil. And then describe a little bit about some templates for durable living arrangements in the future. Sustainability is a myth, as indicated by the second law of thermodynamics. Things break down. Entropy. It's a law. It's not a strong suggestion. It's the second law of thermodynamics. As an example, we emerge from the void, we take a few blinks, we go back into the void, and that's at the level of every organism. Think about the human lifespan at the level of every culture, including industrial culture in which we are enmeshed, and every species. Homo sapiens, if we stop today, if our extinction comes tonight, say, then we will have lasted about one-seventh as long as the typical species of mammal. A couple hundred thousand years. That's not long at all when you consider the run of the universe, for example, just this one little universe from amongst the multiverse. As, and I already mentioned the second law of thermodynamics in particular, although the laws of thermodynamics generally preclude sustainability. And if you, if you need one more reason why sustainability is a myth, understand this. Who has the world's largest sustainability program? That would be Walmart. If that doesn't convince you that sustainability is a myth, I don't think there's anything I can say that would. Cheap plastic crap at Walmart is not about sustainability. Neoclassical economics assumes that we will always find substitutes, that we can continue infinite growth on a finite planet. As a consequence, obsolescence is built in. And particularly since World War II in this country, we make everything so that it's a throwaway object. 
Think about cars. Since World War II, every car gets a remake every year. So that everybody can tell, you're not driving the 2012 Prius, you're driving the 2011 Prius, it's got those funny chrome wheels. You really should have the 2012. That's what designed obsolescence is all about. Make us feel like we need to consume more stuff. Uh, fiscal economics has been proposed within the last 15 years or so. The leading champion is a guy named Charles Hall at State University of New York. The only person I know denied tenure at an Ivy League institution the same week he made the cover of Science for his work on energy. Doing excellent work in the realm of biophysical economics, which recognizes that we live on a finite planet, therefore there are limits to growth, and therefore that conservation might be a good idea instead of built-in obsolescence. Even the New York Times in late 2008 had an article that concluded neoclassical economics is dead and the only way forward is biophysical economics. Of course, in every issue of the New York Times before and after that, they abandoned that notion, but there was a glimmer of hope there for one day on page E27 in the fourth column.